When I first saw that this documentary was coming out, I was a little hesitant because we've already had two recently that deal with sextortion. But whoa, the most hated man on the internet is wildly different. But is it good? The most hated man on the internet tells the story of one mother's mission against the self-styled king of revenge porn after nude photos of her daughter are posted online. So Hunter Moore is this guy who got crazy famous by becoming a self-proclaimed life ruiner. Now he founded a website that posted nude or compromising pics of people, usually without their consent. But to be fair, there was a segment of the site where the pictures were self-submitted. But the true crux of this documentary focuses on how private photos were obtained and then uploaded to the website. There are a crap ton of interviews here, featuring former friends, girlfriends, acquaintances, all of them of Hunter Moore, plus discussions with law enforcement, justice officials, journalists, and most notably, some victims. Now, the story is driven by the mom of one of the victims. Charlotte Law has set her sights on getting her daughter's stolen photos removed from the website, and she's like an attack dog. I mean, this woman is tenacious and determined and just won't stop until her goal is achieved. She gives us play-by-play -play accounts of the steps that she took in tracking down other victims, as well as dealing with law enforcement and then the frustrations that accompany that. Now, one glaring interview that is missing is of Hunter Moore himself. Now, the documentarians invited him to tell his side of the story, but he ultimately declined. So all of the accounts and testimony from Moore come from interviews, recordings, social media, and podcasts. Whoo hoo, that dude is something else too. Now, there are a lot of scary parallels to the mindsets and behaviors that we see by Moore and his acolytes in today's society, especially with the alpha male bros. Now, the attitudes are unsettling, and this documentary does a good job of painting the level of influence and status that Moore had on his followers. The interviews in this are heartbreaking and frustrating, but also sometimes humorous. And we get very detailed accounts of the ramifications that occurred by having photos placed on that site. And sure, I mean, it's easy to victim blame and say, well, if they didn't take the photos in the first place, none of this would have happened. But come on, that takes the focus off of the perpetrator and then absolves them of their wrongdoing. But when these involve people who didn't post their pics anywhere, whether the photos were stolen or posted by some ex who just feels that they have a right to exact revenge on their former lover, it's a violation. And then the ones who have their pics posted are the victims. Now, the documentary is three episodes out of each about an hour. And I really was hesitant at first because it's no fun when info is just dragged out just to fill a time requirement. Now, there is some slowness in parts of this, even though the info isn't repetitive. Now, it may feel repetitive, but that's only because Moore is kind of the one-trick pony when it comes to his actions. I mean, there's no nuance to who he is. So every interview with him, while they are totally disgusting and aggravating, they're all very similar. But the case continues to uncover more and more about him and his practices, which is what keeps this engaging and then progressing forward. The third episode had me clapping my hands and laughing with giddiness at what is initiated. Moore touts himself as an internet genius, and he certainly knew how to exploit and use notoriety to gain traction for his site. But when it comes to the actual internet and then computer savviness, there are others that are much more qualified and talented and ruthless. Now, I kept hoping that the story would turn a certain way, and I was overjoyed when it did. Now, yeah, I know that was vague because I think it's one of the most exciting and surprising parts of the documentary. So I want you to be able to enjoy it as I did. The filmmaking and editing are really well executed. The interviews are gorgeously shot. And then the way that everything is pieced together creates compelling and exciting storytelling. And there is so much archival footage of Moore available just from his social postings and his interviews and his podcasts that we get huge insight into his mind and character or lack thereof. I think this has the potential to leave you frustrated though, like so many true crime documentaries do. I mean, when hearing about the crimes or just simply terrible people doing horrendous things and then seeing what types of ramifications they endure, the punishment is typically not satisfying. And here it's the same. And there's a particular consequence that's employed that seems to be completely unenforceable, illustrating how those in authority really need to be plugged into the mainstream culture and then have a huge grasp on technology and social media. Now, in addition to leaving you slightly frustrated, this really could make you angry or sick to your stomach while you're watching, just due to the behaviors and the mindsets that are displayed. Now, I really enjoyed the information that was presented, especially because it still holds some relevance for today's social media usage. Now, obviously, new protections are in place now where they weren't when this case was initially going on in the early 2010s. So overall, The Most Hated Man on the Internet was surprising for me. The storytelling was captivating, if not stomach churning. The interviews helped to paint a picture of not only victims that had their photos unwillingly shared to a public website, but we also get the perspectives of those that voluntarily participated in submitting their own photos. The interviews look amazing from a technical perspective and are woven together with news and archive footage to provide a captivating narrative. 
Now, while three episodes may be a little excessive and might feel repetitive, the information is extensive and then supported through first-hand accounts and data. And as disgusting as the behaviors and mindsets of the perpetrators are, we see in this current decade the exact same attitudes displayed, illustrating just how much more work is needed towards the treatment of others. There's no sex, but a ton of blurred nudity and graphic descriptions of sex. There's a great deal of profanity and no violence shown other than the psychological violence that's perpetrated against the victims. Now, as a reminder, I don't give couch ratings to documentaries, but I highly recommend checking out The Most Hated Man on the Internet, which is on Netflix right now. So what are you currently binging? Anything good that I should add to my list? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.